somewhere. Hey guys, Mike Taylor, AKA Battleship Cobra. Today is gonna to be a short one where we're gonna cover a fun little topic about the B1UP item placement tool. We're going to make a checkbox and a button. Two things that you can't easily do and definitely couldn't do with the SAP user interface editor. But first, check out battleshipcobra.com. All my stuff is there, including my crystal reports for SAP Business One online course and my SQL for SAP Business One online course. Now, let's jump right into the topic. Adding checkboxes and buttons are just nice user interface additions to any form. In particular, the checkbox can be used for many applications. You can use it to conditionally hide or show sections in crystal reports. So say it was on an invoice, which is what we're gonna to do today. We can do an example where if you check the box, it will print a different way or it'll print a different section. And you could use it for queries, validations, all sorts of various things. So it's always really useful and it's super easy to do with B1UP. Buttons, obviously, if you need to do macros or you need to do any sort of thing where you need to click a button and have immediate response to run a query from a window to do some sort of, um, you know, anything you're going to do, run another crystal report that's not the same layout or, you know, I've, I've done a credit check. I've done a credit check PDF form from a business partner, which is nice. So it was a standardized credit check uh, form. And then you just basically can click a button and it will automatically generate and email that from the business partner. So let's jump into the system now. So the first thing you need to do to make a UDF checkbox is to make the UDF. Before making a UDF, please make sure you back up your database. I'm not gonna go through that in this video. Tools, customization tools, user-defined fields. In this case, I'm gonna do marketing documents, title, add and then we're going to do youtube example youtube example okay alphanumeric i don't usually mess with this validation valid values i don't usually like to use valid values um, using valid values is really restrictive but in this case it's only literally going to be yes or no it's a checkbox right so you say yes or you say no this is how I do it. Is that right? I don't know. I've used it a hundred times. Set the default value. So do you want a default to check or default to uncheck? I'm going to default to uncheck. I'm just going to say mandatory. So it goes back and updates everybody. It just makes it easier for you to do your reporting this way. Click add. Ignore. Okay. So that was all added. Let's go to our invoice. So on the invoice, unfortunately, we're gonna to have to show that ugly, ugly sidebar. Ooh, look down here, YouTube example, right click. Add this UDF onto the main window. I'm gonna put it under or below, ready to place. And then you click a label, so I'm gonna click due date. So you can see here it's already placed. Uh, because it's placed with a relatively new version, it's going to size itself properly, even with the, same, the change of um, formats. So if this were to change to a size 14 font, it should proportionately size itself with all the other system fonts. So now you're gonna say, oh, that's not a checkbox. Okay. Right click, edit item placement tool configuration. So we have a lot of uh, item placements. Yours would probably be at the top. So I'm gonna scroll down. The only thing I need to do here, YouTube example, it does everything for you. Place below, you can see it's um, place below relative positioning. Combo box, switch to a checkbox. Push update. So you wanna reopen the form you added the checkbox to. Now you can see YouTube example is here, check, uncheck. Um, you'll notice that when you check and uncheck it, it is going to modify this UDF. So really it is the same thing, but again, the results you want and the goal that you want is to remove and block and never see this UDF sidebar. It is confusing for users, impossible to maintain. And of course, what's nicer than having a nice checkbox in the header area there? Very clear, 
if this meant more to me, I mean, YouTube example doesn't really have anything, but um, YouTube example. And so that's basically it. So you can add your thing. You know how this works. So basically you make your regular invoice and whether this says like show an extra section or print out additional material or tracking for something or show certification or whatever. Um, that's all that you need to do for a checkbox. For the button, it is almost as easy. You just need to pick where you want the button to go. In this case, I'm gonna put it next to the cancel button down here. And you don't even need a UDF for a button and you don't need to use the content creator. The content creator has been phased out. You don't need to do it. So we can just go right click, edit item placement tool. Okay, we're going to need to know what the item is for the cancel button. So we go to our view system information. Down in the bottom left corner, you see cancel form 133 item 2. So it's item 2. Peace. I found these results. Thanks, Google. So we're going to add a row. It gave us a new boyx underscore 46 reference. We could just say YouTube button. Then we're going to, we don't need to change anything. We're going to say place right to. We're going to say item two, because we checked that. I'm going to say it's like six item spaces. And then all we really need is to switch this to button. The other little things you want to know, and if you scroll over here, you could change the width. So let's say the width is, let's go 150. You could change that width. You don't need the other things to be set there. It'll kind of set the, it'll set the size based on the relative field. And the only other thing you want to really look at is whether it's active on any one of these things. So say find mode, it doesn't do anything. Add mode, it doesn't do anything. You can make it uh, not clickable or okay. Maybe it's only used for add mode. I'm just gonna leave it on these two and not on find mode just for the sake of example today. So those are the really quick options. Click update. So it will appear at the bottom there. It looks like it's a little bit more than I thought there. So scroll back down. Uh, you can measure this out using like paint or whatever. I'm gonna switch to eight. I don't remember exactly what it was. I think it's seven or something and it should appear there, seven. That looks good to me. So anyway, close that and there you have a button. See, we click, clickety, click, click. So you'll notice it doesn't do anything. Um, you need to add a B1 validation to it, but luckily you can go right click, add B1 validation configuration. When this is pressed, you can look up B1 validations and the training uh, in another video. It's a good topic for another video. I'm not going to go into that, but you can trigger uh, queries, you can trigger emails, you can query, trigger prints, you can trigger other crystal reports, you can trigger dashboards to load off of this, you can trigger macros is probably the most common one. I'm not going to cover that in today's quick video, but that's how you make a button there. You can also use the sidebar buttons, they're known as function buttons. Uh, that's really easy to do as well. I'm not going to cover that in my video, but um, the way that I showed you is really good for placing specific buttons in specific places that you want. So you, these ones on the side are the function buttons. I really like those as well. So you can look those up and that's a great topic for another video too. I swear guys, they didn't pay me. I just really like the product. Thank you guys so much for watching. This was a short one. Hopefully it helped you to understand how to make a checkbox and a button. I do videos weekly and release them Mondays at 9 a.m. Pacific Standard Time. So if you don't come to YouTube, click that notification bell below when you subscribe. If you wanna send me a message or just stay connected, go to linkedin.battleshipcobra.com. That'll take you right to my profile. Send me some video ideas or if you have some questions, obviously I'm not gonna do a large amount of support, but if you need just general guidance, I can help you. Thank you so much for watching. This is Mike Taylor, I'm out for now, bye.